It's the first of a series of international events around the ocean. Uh, the uh, French president on Friday will welcome uh, uh, other leaders to the One Ocean Summit that's taking place in the Brittany uh, port city of uh, Brest. Uh, one of the ideas is to uh, push more countries to ratify the Cape Town Accord that reinforces uh, security uh, for fishing vessels and fights against illegal fishing in the seas, uh, the sea, uh, which is uh, uh, um, which has high stakes in, in the bid to uh, reverse uh, the current uh, climate change around the globe and to protect endangered species. If we do nothing in the next 10 years, 600 million people will have their feet in the water. If we do nothing in 80 years, by the year 2100, the IPCC's predictions of a 1.5 meter rise in sea level will be far exceeded and will be at more than 2 meters rise in sea level. And then, 2, 3 billion people will be really submerged. Therefore, this is an emergency. Yeah, Seventy percent of the planet uh, is water, and uh, the stakes are indeed high, as Claire Rush reports. Pollution, overfishing, habitat destruction, warming waters. The issues facing the ocean are many, and those gathering at the One Ocean Summit in France are hoping to address them. Well, les enjeux sont très très simples. Hein? Réparer les océans. Ils vont mal et ils ont besoin de nous, mais nous avons surtout besoin d'eux. Euh, principalement besoin d'eux parce qu'ils sont source d'oxygène, parce qu'ils sont un puits de carbone. Oceans cover 70% of our planet. They produce half the world's oxygen. They absorb carbon dioxide, playing a crucial role in regulating climate, and they're home to millions of species. But they're also of critical economic and geopolitical importance. Fishing is a $400 billion global industry. 90% of traded goods are transported by maritime shipping. Roughly a third of global oil is produced offshore, and mining companies are showing growing interest in deep sea exploration in the pursuit of minerals. Human activities that are pushing oceans to the brink. Activists are calling for more regulation and protection and are hoping the One Ocean Summit will deliver. Alors on attend des engagements concrets. Actuellement, il y a seulement 3% des océans de la planète qui sont efficacement protégés, c'est-à-dire mis en, en réserve, alors que les scientifiques nous recommandent de protéger strictement 30% des habitants des habitats marins euh, pour pouvoir continuer de, de tirer des bénéfices durables de, de ces écosystèmes. Conservationists hope the French summit will give fresh momentum to efforts to finalize a legally binding treaty protecting international waters. A new round of UN talks in March will aim to conclude the agreement. Those world leaders gathering in Brest are going to be presented uh, with a petition to save the dolphins. And you don't need to go halfway around the globe. Scientists estimate that between five and 10,000 common dolphins are killed in the Bay of Biscay every year. Uh, the Bay of Biscay, located uh, uh, on the Atlantic uh, coast between France and Spain, and this due to harmful fishing activities, uh, peak deaths uh, uh, occurring between December and March. Well, for more, uh, let's cross now uh, to Brest and uh, join uh, Christine Adams. Uh, Christine Adams, who uh, is, uh, is, uh, with, uh, is the fisheries policy officer uh, with uh, the uh, uh, NGO Seas at Risk. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, this petition uh, that uh, you've uh, launched, uh, uh, what's in it and uh, how many have signed? Yeah, so this petition has already uh, more than half a million signatures. And um, it basically calls on EU decision makers, so the European Commission and also the member states um, like in France and Spain, that um, to protect the dolphins in the Bay of Biscay because they're currently um, in the winter uh, stranding um, to the thousands because they are getting caught in fishing nets. Getting caught in fishing nets and it's all about the size of those nets? Yeah, it's, it's about um, fishers fishing, uh, going out to fish f species that um, also the dolphins like to eat. So they come at the same place at the same time and then 
the dolphins get entangled in the nets and um, they either die or suffocate or they um, they get severely injured and die on on the in the following days and then they can either then they end up on our beaches um, along the coast um, or they get they just think to the bottom and we don't even know about them and uh, is there a way to s- protect the dolphins and the livelihoods of those fishermen? Yes, so we have um, quite clear scientific advice on um, what we can do to prevent these catches. Um, and But at the moment, not enough is done by the national government, so by the French government, but also both by the Spanish government, um, to implement these measures that are recommended by scientists. Um, there are technical measures that can be implemented to, to basically keep the dolphins away. But most importantly, what would need to happen is that we close certain fisheries for a very specific amount of time um, when the dolphins are in the, in the waters to protect them. And how long a time? So this would be uh, for several weeks between uh, December and March. So because this is the peak season where there's this clash between uh, fishers and um, dolphins in the Bay of Biscay. That's in the Bay of Biscay, uh, the protected waters. How far should they go? And have you spoken with uh, uh, fisheries associations? What, What do they tell you? So, um, yeah, so scientists um, can, or working on to know exactly which areas would need to be closed, but um, we are talking about bigger areas here, um, specifically in the Bay of Biscay, and um, our national member organization, like France Nature Environnement, they are in close contact also with fishers, and they sit together in um, in stakeholder rounds to discuss these issues with the government and with the fishers. Because there's um, small fishing boats and there's the big industrial trawlers. Uh, does that make a difference? Yeah, it depends on uh, who goes out and fish at what time and which species they catch. Um, so we have um, in the Bay of Biscay, it's mostly the pelot- pelagic trawlers so that fish um, the same species, like for example, sea bass or European hake, or also whiting, that are also um, the food of the common dolphins. And uh, has the French government uh, reacted to your petition so far? Yes, yeah, so we have um, invited the European Commission, but also the national representatives from France and Spain. Um, to receive this petition tomorrow evening. And um, so far, we haven't received any positive reaction from the French government uh, to accept this petition. France has uh, one of the world's largest uh, uh, coastal waters. If, on top of it, if you add to not just the, the coastline here in Europe, but all of its overseas dependencies and uh, uh, it's a big it's a big area. How do you increase? How do you decide again? It's this question of lives versus livelihoods. How do you increase the amount of protected areas for fish in a way that also allows fishermen to earn a living? Yes, um, this is uh, one of the very difficult questions you have this different um, interests that are coll- collapsing um, colliding here. But um, we say that um, there's dolphins are protected and they need to be protected. And um, this is very important to do because we are at the um, biodiversity collapse. There's a six mass extinction happening and um, which is happening faster at the ocean in the ocean than on land. And there's a legal duty from the member states to protect um, dolphins, but also the wider ecosystem. Um, this said, um, it is also, of course, important to consider the livelihoods of fishermen, and we don't want to um, make fishers to stop the, to stop fishing altogether. It's about to find a right balance to close, maybe at a certain um, period, the fisheries, so we can protect the dolphins, but um, the fishers can go at other times when there's less than there's least dolphins out there. Um, 
And in terms of protected areas, it's not only about the space and the amount of protected areas, but it's also about don't having them only on paper. Um, we need to protect areas really on the ground. So we can't just say on paper, oh, this area is protected, but um, they need to be also enforced. All right, more, 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 more patrols out there. Christine Adams of the advocacy group Seas at Risk. Many thanks for speaking with us from Brest, where that One Ocean Summit is taking place. Thank you very much for having me.